A big thank you goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. Hello, hello everybody. Right, last vlog of my trip. I, I have to be really honest with you. I'm, I've been away for oh, about three weeks now and uh, I'm really looking forward to going back home. Um, but before we go, we're back in Scotland. We've been to uh, the Isle of Mull, Isle of Skye, uh, Faroe Islands, and now Gavin and I are back in Scotland, just here for a couple of days, visiting uh, Gavin's folks. So I'm gonna do a little bit of woodland photography today. It's just so lush and green here. It's just, just absolutely fantastic. Uh, now this woodland, uh, we'll just call it woodland for now. Somewhat of a secret spot. So I'm really looking forward to this old deciduous trees which we don't get an awful lot of uh, on the west coast of British Columbia. It's mostly conifers. So I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, from my understanding, there are uh, really old beech trees. So yeah, it should be good. And as far as the weather goes, uh, there's no directional light. It's really quite overcast and flat, but that should work out okay for, for woodland photography. I can usually find something and uh, from the images that I've seen, um, I think uh, it looks like a really cool place. These uh, beech are really interesting. They have a lot of branches that seem to have grown out of the, the main uh, trunk, but then they kind of break off and then another one comes through. So there's dozens of broken branches and then you've got these sweeping limbs come down and they seem to take root and then another tree will grow out. It's quite interesting. Uh, but like all woodland photography, <laughs> hard to find a composition. There's a lot of um, uh, chaos in here. But I'm going to keep looking around. Uh, I'm sure I can find something. It's uh, yeah, it's really cool. Though, deciduous forests. Okay, now I hate to admit it, but uh, every now and then Gavin does have a good idea, and he does come up with a decent image now and then, but not that often. But this uh, little uh, vignette here, I'll have to give Gavin credit for because it kind of was his idea. Fortunately for me, he didn't have the right focal length, so uh, I do, so I'm taking the shot that he wanted. And basically what I'm doing is just putting on a really long lens, a 70-200 f4, and shooting wide open, so I'm shooting at f4, and just concentrating on uh, one uh, beech tree down the, kind of down the hill here. And it's nice that it's down low, down the hill, so I'm not shooting up at it, I'm shooting down on it so I can avoid a lot of that white sky that we have today. And actually right now, believe it or not, it's raining quite hard, but because we're so sheltered in here, I can't even feel it. So uh, the nice thing about shooting wide open from a distance with a long lens is that you're really able to uh, narrow that angle of view and kind of 
not blur out the background but uh, give it a, a softer effect rather than a harsh effect if, if everything is soft if that makes sense. And another composition that I'm trying to do is also do a pano because there is enough room here that I could probably do four or five vertical images and then just kind of stitch them all together. It's really quite nice. Uh, the whole scene is quite clear and I'm looking straight across at a, at a a wall of green so there's no white in there just a, a whole wall of trees and green and then we have this beautiful beech tree in the center there so uh, yeah it's really quite lovely and then I just found another composition that I'm going to try after this uh, but let me take these images first and then I'll, I'll show, show you uh, that image. All right so this is the composition that I have and you'll notice that there's some uh, kind of branches going over to the right side there so I've, I've tried to put the, the larger beech tree not so much right in the center but just off center to give these tree or these limbs a bit of room to breathe on the right side there and then we have some sweeping uh, kind of branches at the top here and I think that framed it quite nicely but you can see what I mean there's no real white sky I mean there's a few patches but not an awful lot and uh, it's just this wall of green with this beautiful beech tree now if I zoom out like that you can see that we start getting uh, limbs and trees in there that I don't necessarily want, like this uh, this vertical one here, I don't really want in my frame, and then uh, this branch kind of jutting out from the left, I don't really want that. So I'm just zooming in until I get rid of those two, uh, those two branches or trees, just to have a simpler composition. The whole thing about woodland photography is to try and simplify it as much as possible uh, because, you know, forests are generally quite chaotic. So if you can come across a situation like this, it just helps it so much. And you can imagine if there was uh, some kind of mist in here or, uh, or fog, that would really help. And actually, as I look at this scene, because it's raining, it is giving a, a bit of an, an ethereal misty feel to the background. So that's just great. Works works wonderfully. I thoroughly enjoyed spending a couple of hours in this area and although I didn't take that many photographs, uh, the photographs that I did take I'm really quite happy with. Now I did play around with the colours a little bit and I, I used a bit of artistic license for this image here. I actually added a little bit of gorge and blur to give it a bit more, I'll just make it a little bit lighter and airier. As you can see from the, uh, the raw file I've lightened up the, the shadows considerably and I've also uh, really brightened up the white areas in the background. I just really liked that light feel to the shadows and the highlights. Now when I originally took this, uh, I took a whole bunch of images at uh, f4.5 thinking that that was going to be uh, the image that I really wanted and I just happened to take a few at a smaller aperture, f16 and I actually preferred the ones at the smaller aperture. The problem with the, the wider aperture images uh, was that I just didn't give myself enough uh, depth of field. And of course, F16 was a, just a little bit too much because there was some wind in the area. And of course, uh, you know, small apertures with slower shutter speeds and with a bit of wind, then you get some movement in the leaves. Now, it's not all that bad. Uh, it uh, kind of adds to the ethereal uh, nature of these photographs but uh, in hindsight it probably would have been best to shoot it around uh, f8 or, or 5.6 something like that just to give it a little bit more depth but also freeze the uh, the leaves from moving in the wind I'm not really sure uh, where Gavin's got to, but uh, I guess I should go and have a 
look, see if I can find him and maybe steal another composition of his. <laughs> uh, such a beautiful little woodland. Uh, it's so different that, than uh, what, what I'm used to. Uh, I've never really photographed deciduous forests, um, not that I can recall. And uh, yeah, this has some beautiful specimens in here. There's oaks in here and uh, lots of beech trees. And there's even a few uh, scotch pine in here as well, which is which are really, really nice. Uh, what, are, what other trees are in here? I'm not familiar with all the English trees, um, but those are the ones that I know anyway. Right, see if I can uh, find his, uh, his portliness. <laughs> all right, I've come across another scene here that I think is going to work. On the back of the camera, it looks really, really nice. Uh, but you know, again, it, I can't really tell until I actually open it up into uh, Photoshop or Lightroom. But what I really like about it, it is just so green and lush. And, and that was one of the things that I kind of missed on Vancouver Island this year. We just kind of went straight from winter uh, to summer because it's been such a hot, uh, dry uh, spring, which is quite unusual for the island. But here it's just so green and uh, it's just beautiful. Now there's a, a sweeping kind of, well there's a sweeping branch here and it kind of forks off in the foreground. So what I've tried to do is make that into a curtain that, that kind of veils the trees beyond. And I focused right on the on the bra on that branch, and everything behind it is out of focus. Now it might not work. So we'll have to see how it goes. I don't want to stop down and get everything in focus because then it just looks too harsh, and you get all those um, all the contrasts and and uh, lines intersecting, and it just looks very busy. But by leaving the aperture open, f four in this case, uh, it really softens things up nicely. So, like I said, in the camera it looks great. Uh, I'll show you the composition that I have and uh, and then uh, I'll show you the results uh, at the end. All right, so this is the comp that I have and you can see this uh, this branch that uh, kind of veers off to the, the right a little bit here and then kind of diagonally goes across to the left bottom there. And you'll also notice in the background there's two trees that have branches that are kind of mimicking one another and go diagonally across the frame. I'm not sure if that might be a bit of a distracting where this intersecting line is. I'm not sure. We also have a few blue, uh, bluebells left in the bottom here. Uh, but like I said, it's such a soft, uh, ethereal looking uh, uh, image. I'm going to try and maintain that when I uh, develop this shot. And uh, I hope it works out because it, in the camera it looks just beautiful. As you can see in the raw file here, I've really opened up the shadows and the highlights. I wanted to maintain that ethereal look that I, I first envisioned when I saw this scene, somewhat like the other images that I've shown in this uh, video. I've also cropped out all of those distractions in the bottom there. They weren't helping the photograph, made it more into a panorama type image. And lastly, even though the image is straight. Uh, it looks like it's leaning over to the left a little bit. So uh, I just kind of strained it up. I think it was because we were on a slope. Right, once again, a big thank you goes out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Are you in the market for a stylish and contemporary looking website? A website that is simple to set up and even easier to update on the fly. Squarespace offers a multitude of award-winning templates to work with that will dazzle your audience. Not only is a website from Squarespace easier to set up, but if you find yourself in a pickle, no problem. Squarespace offers unprecedented online support. So what are you waiting for? Present your photography to the world with a website from Squarespace. For a free trial, go to squarespace.com. And if you like what you find, go to squarespace.com forward slash Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. That's right. Squarespace.com forward slash Adam Gibbs for 10% off your first purchase. I 
everybody. Once again, we've come to the end of another video. Please be sure to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this episode. And as always, please be sure to hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the content of my channel. Till next week, bye for now. Thank you.